Cheers. Help each other out. Yes. yes. Black success, nothing but uh, wealthy prosperity and great, great spirits. That's it. In 2022, that's what we're doing. That's right. That's good. Cheers to that. Hey, I agree. Cheers to that. That's good. That. That's that wealth part. <laughs> Welcome to the Mouth of the South show. I have comedian Cedric. How are you? I'm outstanding, man. How are you today? I'm good. Tell me. Yes. Tell me, what do I not know about you? What do you not know about me? Um, um, my career is not taking off yet. You sure. I'm having fun in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't taking off yet. But you've been performing at Icon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's my, that's my home away from home. Yeah, yeah, Icon. Those are my first. Shout out to Icons, man. All the boys, man. Uh, uh, Dwayne, T Love, shout out to Big One, shout out to Steve and Theo, man. They treat me good over there. So I, I do a show there once a month. But um, I'm just a, uh, I'm just a working comedian, man. I'm trying to get into everything I can get into, man. I'm trying to take this thing to another level where uh, I can do it. That's going to be a national touring comedian. Get yeah, eventually get off into other stuff. I want to like movies. I want to make music. I want to do all types of stuff. I'm a wild guy. Okay. Are you interested in film? Yeah, very interested in film. I've done uh, I've done some some movies. I've done some stage plays. I've done a web series. Okay. I'm a thespian actor. Okay. <laughs> Listen now. If I need you now. Yeah, come on now. I'm Working on the film now. Hey, I'm Working. ready. I stay ready, man. Yeah. Shout out to Carlton Clay and uh, uh, Jay Paul. I've been in some of their productions. Okay. So they, they own the film and they've been in a whole lot of stuff. Okay, so what made you interested in comedy? You know what? One day I realized, huh? Yeah, comedy. Oh, yeah, comedy. I, I started comedy. I was already doing it anyway. I just officially started doing it one day because I, you know, I, I was at that point. In life, where I had kind of, I wanted to be a singer first, and so, so I was in a group, and then we had a dude that thought he was David Ruffin before we made any money. He dipped out, and the group messed up, and then I was sitting there like, pondering my future. And uh, a friend of mine came to me. He said, "Hey man, you're pretty funny, man. I put together a show. You should come and do some stand up." I'm like, I had thought about doing it before, but I was like. But I realized I was doing it anyway. I was clowning in school. I was clowning at all the get-togethers. I was clowning at everybody's house. I was clowning at my mom and daddy's house. So I said, you know what, let me give it a try. So then he said, um, he's a black promoter. So he set up about six shows. Five of them fell through. And they kept, hey, oh, man, something happened, man. They couldn't get transportation. Oh, we could get in the hotel room. You know how black people, oh, we could, man, the venue had double booked with, oh, man, we couldn't. So then finally, one actually went through. Uh, it was 2009, January 2009. I opened up for Tyler Craig over at Club 706. And it was like I was outside of my body watching myself. I was like, this is what I should have been doing my whole life. When I got those first couple laughs, that was it. I've been hooked ever since. That's where it started. At. Are you originally from Augusta? No, I'm actually from Pelham, Georgia. Small town, south side of Pelham, Georgia, man. Down there in Panhandle. You know, you don't know about that, dude. You ever heard of Albany? I went to school in Albany. You went to school in Albany? You never heard of Pelham? Pelham's like 35, 40 miles from Albany. Are we going to Columbus? Are we going to Further down towards Tallahassee. Yeah. So you, you, you pass through Albany going to Pelham. Okay. Yeah, on that, that same highway. The same highway they go all the way. Well, they got other highways now. But they went through that now. Y'all got this thing. Like, it's branched off. They got like other exits and stuff. So yeah, that same highway that runs straight through the middle of Albany. You run right down there to take you straight to Pelham. Okay, yeah. good. Country folks. Georgia folks. Georgia folks. Georgia folks in here. <laughs> I'm talking about, yeah, niggas uh, walk into the mail, mailbox, bounce with it. Niggas walking everywhere barefooted. You had kids in the store walking around barefooted. That thing down south. So what's your comparison of here and here and now? Yeah. Oh, Augusta is light years ahead of Pelham. I mean, people in Pelham just started getting internet at their house like last year. No, I'm just playing. Yeah, really? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's good. Good small home country people, man. It's a little bit. It's a little bit behind us. So people call Augusta country. I'd be like, nah. 
country. It's definitely not country. So it's definitely going to be a whole lot worse. But I love Pepper, man. There's some great people down there. Yeah. So tell me more about you. What, what can I expect? You know? What can you expect me in the future? In the future, you can expect me to keep grinding. Um, I, like I do, I, I work, I do shows. Um, no event is too small. Okay? So whatever you got going on, bar mitzvahs, birthdays, uh, circumcisions, we, we do every type of event known as man. Nah, but pretty much I just uh, I grind and I get out and do my shows. I got my monthly show at Icons. I also do another monthly show in Poole, Georgia with CMB Entertainment. And uh, any other opportunities that are coming up, you know, I, I travel and, and do all stuff all over down the East Coast. And uh, we working, man. I'm also working on getting my acne portfolio together. I want to do more of that, too. Okay, yeah, so I was going to ask you, yeah. do you want to just stick to the comedy? Ooh, no. Nah. Just... Uh, we want to open up all the streams of income, man. I feel like every entrepreneur or person that's out there, I was told by a successful entrepreneur you have to have six streams of income. So I'm, I'm working on I'm getting that. So I would like to do uh, I would like to do more uh, acting stuff, uh, whether it's web series, movies, films. This used a lot of films. No, I didn't like it used to be. It used to be. Well, yeah. you gotta make it to New York. Uh, oh uh, no, uh, it's easy now. Los Angeles. Well, I don't know. Now everybody shoot movies. Everybody, yeah. Everybody shoot movies. Now. And you can put it on any type of platform. Yeah. You can, so it's plenty of opportunities out there now. Hey man, what's up? What you got to do? Nah, I'm gonna shoot the movie, man. I'm gonna be shooting the movie. Where you at? The house? You <laughs> should be shooting the movie just like that. Oh yeah, it can happen, man. I mean, all it takes is a simple premise and a little bit of preparation, and you can knock it out. So, what is some inspiration that you've been given that you share with me? Inspiration. Um, inspiration. Uh, I think my early adulthood life was an inspiration. When you reach in your pocket all the time, you can grab nothing but your leg and limp. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be broke like that no more. You know what I'm saying? That's an inspiration. Uh, my kids are inspiration. I got boys. They're grown now. But leaving a legacy is something for them to have after I'm gone. Um, I think that's, that's something I'm definitely interested in. Uh, that motivates me. Um, and I think the best advice I probably have gotten over the years is from my dad. He said, you stand for something or you'll fall for anything. And that's true. Uh, whatever you're trying to do, uh, even if you're doing it the wrong way, stand up and do it the wrong way. Find out it's wrong. You know what I mean? You just got to get up, uh, take a stand for something, press, and just uh, believe in yourself. And that's the biggest thing. I think a lot of times we live life in a box. And we're told, hey, you're supposed to do this and live your life this way and this way. All the other stuff is fantasy. That stuff is not fantasy no more. You got people making themselves entrepreneurs without college degrees. You got people who are, uh, have college degrees and drowning in debt. So it's it's like you have to make it. Oh yeah, <laughs> Sally made and got you, huh? Everybody. You know, Sally on her back. I thought I seen Sally ride through the parking lot when I came over here. <laughs> oh, you you going to Shana? They going to pick me up. You know Shana? I don't know Shana. I said, nah, I ain't going to Shana's house. I don't know Shana. Yeah. No, nah, but I mean, she, she doing a, she doing a web series. She got some money or something. Yeah, something. Yeah, that, yeah. That's it, man. But I think uh, I think those, those premises are kind of like what I, what I live by. I just try to keep myself motivated every day. And just you know, have have a good spirit and energy, man. Just laugh and smile. How has your uh, career progress in Augusta? It's in Augusta? Oh wow! You know, a lot of people say. Uh, Augusta, though, it, it's, it's hard, it's tougher because Augusta will have a large market for entertainment, but it's, it's not impossible. We have people that have made it from Augusta. Uh, we've got NFL football players, uh, we've got uh, a couple actors. I mean, Reggie Lewis, Reggie Lewis from Augusta, he's, a, he's an actor. He was just on what, CSI recently, something like that. Um, so we have people that, that make it. I mean, Augusta is a very humbling town. Augusta will let you know you suck. They'll let you know up front. If you ain't no good, they will let you know off the muscle. Man. Yeah, they, they're rough on you. I mean, but that, that's really helped me develop thick skin because when yeah. I go other places, you know, Augusta got me right. So where do you see yourself in the next five years living? Where do you see yourself in the next five years living? Yeah. Living with my career, um, like I say, I want to be a national touring comedian, you know, full time, 100%. Um, and I want to take advantage of other opportunities with the acting. And I, I really want to make an R&B album too. I love singing. Yeah, I heard that you were yeah, singing. I still, I still, still love singing, man. I love R&B music. I want to make an R&B album. Um, and just be like totally 
dependent on myself to make it. You know what I mean? It's hundred percent me. Me and my talent. That's what I really want to be. Getting paid off of and like open up those opportunities, you know. Being on TV and all that good stuff, you know, fame and notoriety. I don't want so much of it, but I take a bit of it. They want it. You know that red carpet? I'm talking about that real, I'm talking about that real red carpet. Now I ain't talking about where they put the paper on the back of the wall. But people, that's not a red carpet either. <laughs> you need to stop taking pictures in front of that paper on the wall. I'm talking about the damn red carpet, okay? The red carpet is long. It's luxurious. luxurious. You walk across it, yeah. It don't it don't move when you walk across it either. You know what I mean? Do not put that backdrop up there no more. I'm talking about it's a damn red carpet, okay? Yeah, that's that's, Hollywood. <laughs> I'm gonna walk it one day. Yeah, for real. Yeah, you gotta walk the red carpet. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're off to a great start, so I believe in your journey, and I believe in your Thank career, you know, you're a great man, I've mm -hmm. heard, and yes. I cannot wait to check out the combination. Yeah, come on, dude. Come on. I tried to get you to come last night, but you, you was working. You was right here shooting. Yeah. Making it happen, mouth to south. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. And like I said, I'm at Icons once a month. I'm in Poole, Georgia. It's right outside Savannah. I'm there once a month. And um, whatever other opportunities come up, I got a lot of comedy friends, you know, all up and down the coast. So whenever they need something, well, I'm on the way. Move. Okay. Groove. That's it. That's it. <laughs> well, thank you so much again. Yes. Um, so I have a You Are Magic card. Mm -hmm. I love to my guests to read one. All right. One, Just take one and read it. Take one and read it. I don't know why this might be. I don't know why this one is. Magic. Is it a tarot card? This ain't no, it's, um, this ain't no voodoo stuff, is it? This ain't a Ouija board, is it? What kind of game no. is this? Oh, where y'all got this from? We got Milton Hasbro on it. <laughs> I don't know. I had to check this. You are magic. You're, yeah. you're inspiring me. So whatever magic comes out of you is going to shoot me. Oh, okay. I got you. So, you know. If it's like on Spider-Man and the Avengers, it's got something to do with the multiverse. Okay. Well, we're gonna so find far, so good. So far, so good. Okay. <laughs> I have discovered in life that there are ways of getting almost anywhere you want to go if you really want to go. And that's that's true. That's by Langston Hughes. Any black? black? Any Black History Month? Black History Month. Black History Month, Langston Hughes. You know what Langston, I'm a, you ain't here with it, Langston. I'm gonna drink up for you, baby. Yes. Mm. That's really good advice though. I, mean, I, I think in life, uh, I think we're our biggest hindrance sometimes. I think we overthink some things sometimes. I think we, we convince ourselves that things aren't true. Um, like I said earlier, I feel like the generation before us, they taught us to work hard, be honest, go to school, get you a job or a trade. And if you work that job or trade, 20, 30, 40 years, you retire, and that's your life. Yeah, but I mean, that that's not the, that's not true. Yeah, that's not the ultimate goal. So the world has changed. That's not the ultimate goal now for people that are coming up. Some people still live in that box. And it works out for some people. Some people do get a great job with good benefits and perks. And some people are stuck on that minimum wage train. <laughs> yeah. I was so. still trying to figure out. <clears throat> yeah. Well, y'all getting PPP loans, man. Why y'all taking all Ooh. these trips? And I'm still working. No, you see, them people with PPP loans, they're going to come back for them. Oh, yeah, they're going to pay for that. You know? <laughs> they taking a trip, too, <laughs> to the chain gang. <laughs> That's the sound of the man working on the chain gang. Hey, man, what you in here for? Yeah, man, I was robbing stores and getting money, man. What you in here for selling dope, man? What you in here for? Yeah, I'm a murderer, man. What you here for? I applied for a PPP loan, and I, I was unable to pay it back. <laughs> yeah, I better pay them people back. Yeah, Hurry I better up. pay them folks back. So who was your favorite comedian? Oh, man, it's so tough to say. Um, There's just so many different types of comedians, so many people I respect. My absolute favorite comedian right now is probably Dave Chappelle. Um, so I think he's just... He's just a genius. He's just wonderful. I just love so much of what he does. The depth of what he does is amazing. Uh, my favorite comedian I love to see perform, like actually listen to, is Lavelle Crawford. He is just uh, extremely funny, very original and authentic. Um, I think he's got a, a great soul and a wonderful comedy mind. But I respect so many other comedians like 
you know, when you first get introduced to comedy, um, you just respect different things about different people. I think Richard Pryor is definitely like the godfather of comedy. I don't think comedy would be where it is now without him. He's like the, my, probably the greatest pioneer that we've seen because he transitioned it into something that people were just doing on late night television into being something, you know, if you wanted to be dark, it could be dark, it could be edgy, it could be this, it could be that, it can be whatever. Right. So I think you open up the door for that. Um, a lot of people might not like this, but Bill Cosby is very instrumental in black comedy. And I know that uh, the headlines about Bill Cosby haven't been very gracious lately because of some of the things that came out that he may or may not have done. I don't know. But uh, Bill Cosby came along at a time in comedy where, uh, you know, things were very, very white. But Bill was able to break down barriers that nobody else would break down. He did black exploitation films. He did children stuff. He did regular comedy. And if you look at it, he's not like a dark comedian. He don't really cuss in his comedy. So he did like great mainstream work and he had the number one television show that everybody in the world watched for about 10 years. I mean, that's unheard of for a black person to do. So we have to give him his props. Because Cosby Show, that was revolutionary. Everybody watched Cosby Show. Even the reruns now, I still watch it. I mean, he's just an amazing comedy mind and influence. Um, you know, I'm not sure about his personal life and other stuff, but people forget about all the great stuff he did once they found out about something bad that you may have participated in. But uh, I singing with it too, so I always like people like uh, J. Anthony Brown, Jamie Foxx, Sidney Entertainment. Those are always some of my personal favorites, so it's a lot of comedy influence out there. Yeah. So, you're next? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm next up. Yeah. I'm next up. Tell them I'm coming. Yeah. I told them already. Didn't hear him. He said he's coming. Okay. That's right. I ain't got nothing to lose. Nothing, nothing holding me back. Nothing. You can reach me um, on social media under the words Cedric S A S E D D R I C K. You can reach me on Facebook. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter. You can also reach me on Instagram. I got a TikTok, but I ain't got much stuff on it. I'm, I'm trying to get through that too because I see a lot of sorry people making money like this. So I'm gonna do that too. But everything's under Cedric S A S. E D D I R I C K. It ain't nobody else got a name like that. So you know it's me. <laughs> but again, thank you so much for coming on the Mouth of the South show. I'm your host, Sheena Mina, and this is. Community Society, y'all be out, man. Don't stop to me. Unless you got issues together.